Hi, welcome to Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. At Chronicles? No. Oh. You've ruined it. Yeah, you've ruined it. It's Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. Alright. Can't see you that close, mate. <laughs> You're with Al and the Biff. And we set up a little. Um, a little from here. Just a shower, yeah? Yeah. Set up a little question and answer thing, right? and we asked for a few questions on YouTube and a few questions on Instagram. Did we get it? Like, did we get water in your ear? Yeah, I do, yeah, but should have sorted that before you got on here. I know. So I'm just going to go through them. I've screenshots all the questions, so I'm not just like texting on the phone. Screenshots of them all, and I'll go through them. Some of them are for me, some of them are for you, some of them are for both. We'll go through them all and answer whatever ones we can. First ones, right? So it's for both this, serious. What are your 2020 goals for on the course? You can start. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, my main goal for this season really is, well, still a big one, but top 50 in the world. Obviously 73 at the moment entering this season, so 23 spots to go. It's a massive goal of mine. If I can get, some, you know, if I can get somewhere near, or even if I can just get close, closer to it by the end of the season, that'd be great. That's your next step in it, really. Absolutely. Maybe win again. And maybe I can then afford the, like a hair transplant or something. That's an option, yeah. This year I just want to play more, play more competitive golf. I think I've done a lot of work um, in previous years to not play enough. Last year was a, a bit disappointing, so I'd love to play in the Open this year. Goal, first stage, final stage, play in the Open. And then who knows what happens. And then all being well, see where we are at the end of the year. And um, yeah, if, we've, if we've done all right, we'll get to Q school. See how we go then. That's Bosh. the plan. Bosh. Can you do some? This is from Gareth Dodds. Can you do some more behind the scenes at tournaments with the Biff, please, mate? I think that's a bit of a thing you're going to try and do, isn't that it? That is a plan, yeah. I'm going to have a little bit more time to do that this year. So that helps me out going out. I mean, I did one earlier in last year at Hillside for the British Masters, and the just the process you go through when you play a practice round it is really good to do. So I'd like to do a bit more of that. With you, and if you can get someone decent on the video as well, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll try and get a good player with you us. Play with some yeah. decent players, that'd be sound because yeah. it just makes it a bit more interesting. Any lads watching, if you fancy it, give us a text. So, yeah, yeah, answer to your question, yes. What SPF factor do you use for your nose in the hotter weather? <laughs> Seriously, factor 50. You did add jab 50 on yesterday because it is a big old nose. Rudolph. Honestly, yeah, I was going to say someone actually mistaken him for Rudolph, a rain day. Rudolph job, and it's not the time of year for Rudolph now, is it? So, no. It's alright in December, it's alright. It's like themed, isn't it? But no, not anymore. It's definitely not December. Then. Wirral looks amazing at the moment, doesn't it? Look at it, overlooking Wales there. <laughs> Stunning. Adair, 1983. A D E H, 1983. This was from. What's the best preference, super long drive or stiff in a wedge? Ooh, stiff in a wedge, guaranteed birdie, because I might miss otherwise. <laughs> 11 handicap, this is Phil Lavelle, he's a member of Bromborough. 11 handicap, what bounce am I looking for on my wedge? If you're someone that fats your wedges quite a bit, go with more bounce. I've got quite high bounce on my wedges. <laughs> but if you're playing links golf all the time, really tight turf and you like to nip it, lower bounce. Just as a guy, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, if you're taking big divots, go with a little bit of high bound. Yeah, Neil Stone, where's your beard gone? It's coming back. It's coming back. I uh, I just went for a, like a, you know, I've been quoted as being a 42 year old. I'm actually only 26, so I thought, you know what, I'll uh, I'll shave it off and uh, just try and look a bit younger. I think it worked initially. Um, someone said I looked like a 70 year old. So. Same length as there on your head now. Recommended three wood setup for as much anti left as possible. <laughs> go get a lesson. Yeah, that, that would be, you need to take that, that's a killer, that shot, that left, but if not, get an adjustable three wood, get it de-lofted so it's open as much and get the weight set yeah, as, much, toe, as much as you can flat. in the toe. Probably yeah. a little bit stiffer as well. Yeah. Paul, does it amuse you that Alex still hasn't got to his target swing speed? Well, he did. Well, he did. He so, got to 121 point something. Yeah, I did. Watch the rest of the series. So, Come on, keep up. Best course you've played in Ireland. Ooh. Ooh, you know what? I really enjoyed La Hinch. I really, really enjoyed La Hinch last year for Irish Open. Um, I haven't played that many in Ireland, to be I'm fair. I'm saying Conqueror Wood yeah. was, was really, really good, but I, I haven't played enough to say. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, completely. I can't move. Let it slip. Port Rush. Amazing. Oh, yeah, Amazing. 
That was the open. Yeah, thing. sorry, Port Rush, 100% Port Rush. Bosh. Castles, 1989. Any new equipment in the bag? Absolutely not. I don't change my equipment ever. I think they've changed for like, like five years. You should see the state of my spanners. They are literally a bag of spanners. I'm going to have new stuff soon because one, that's my eight iron, which is worn out. It's a little bit toey. I don't like that strike pattern. You've seen this before. The new putter in the bag. Whose initials are on that, mate? I don't know if it's a bit dark out and you cannot see that. There's definitely some initials on the heel there, mate. Yeah, it says PW that. Well, I say PW. Because I stole it from you. Did, so you, did you cut it down new. as well? No, I didn't change the grip. Did you change the grip? That's new in my bag. Circle T, Scotty Cameron button back, and he's cut it down. I didn't cut I it down. It. I, I didn't put that monstrosity on it. I didn't cut Look it. at this. I didn't cut it down. It's 34 inches. Look at that for absolute monstrosity of a grip on a Scotty. Fuming. Put it back, let's move on. J Walls 12, favourite club in the bag. Oh, driver, smash it. Yeah, I'm smash the same, it. Smash I'm it. the same. Driver. Hang on, I've just completely contradicted myself saying I'd rather stiff a wedge. That's in tournament play, yeah, but on a driving range. We all love getting driver and smashing favorite it. Favourite club, yeah. Favourite club in the bag, I'm with you on that. Driver, never used to be. Used to go sideways. Oh, best pitching tip. Can I have this one because I like this. No well, you can, you're good at pitching, but. Practice with the uh, TRS or a stick up the side of the club. Are you getting paid by TRS? No, but I love it. Open the body. Just make sure you turn the body through and give yourself as much room through the hit as possible. I couldn't really add to that. I think it's one of the best drills in the world. That's why I still use my stick. We've got something like a TRS. It's... How, uh, that's quite linked to this putter one, really. How many clubs has Alex borrowed off you over the years? That's from Mark Sheen. At one stage, genuinely one stage, I had driver, three wood, irons, irons wedges. I literally did, and I used to get my balls off you as well. And it was only the putter that you didn't... Yeah, it was use. only the putter. Yeah. It's whole bag. And then I realised, actually, that those clubs have not been fitted for me, <laughs> but because they were Stand borrowed. up. Just stand up. He's using the same loft alive that I was. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the most professional move, but I knew that. How many Wilson clubs is Paul contracted to? Also, All of them. No, a I full can't what's in the bag. We can't well, do a full what's in the bag now, can we? But no. Wilson's been good for you, hasn't it? Which, since you've gone to them, it's been. It's uh, I mean, one with them. I've one with them. Finished well. Gone to the best World seasons Stop, you had. All that sort of stuff. Um, the, some of the new product coming out as well is amazing. To be fair, this one's going to be an argument now. Going through the bag, who's better out of Paul and Alex? And at what? Driving, putting, etc. Okay. Driving 1 0. U2. Irons 2 0. U2. Pitching 3 0. Chipping 4 0. Bunker play 5 0. Can I have putting? I will go, we'll go five and a half half. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm working on things, you see. <laughs> I'm working on stuff to get better, so I think. I, I'm good at driving. What are you looking at like that for? <laughs> I am. Because I know internally like you're really angry over that. I am. Driving. Putting. Yeah. Beat your 5-0 in the chipping comp last year. You did actually. Yeah, you did. You actually did. You actually duffed the chip into the hole. Yeah, beat your 5-0 in the chipping comp. Take what you want from that. You know what? It's interesting because on a serious note with that, when we go out and we practice and we play and we do challenges and stuff, most of the time we'll compete and we'll be pretty close really yeah, yeah, won't we well, yeah. but going into tournaments I'm not you know I'm being realistic would I go out and play a four round tournament and shoot 20 under par it's not there yet you know so it's it, 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 it is actually a good question and when you talk about what's better in the situation Paul's obviously better at I think one, much one of the part things of the there, game in that mental situation. I was just about to say. I think the mind is the big one. Yeah. I think that that's yeah. that's it really. Yeah. But and that's something I'm working on. And I've said before, I'm going to see a psychologist about my. Um, what should we say? Just, yeah, I actually called him a loon the other day. Yeah. But to be fair, that was actually quite a fun question. It's now turned and gone a bit deep. So moving on. How did your putting lesson with Graham go? That's from Adam Stewartson. Uh, really good, actually. Um, 
do you do much stuff when you have a lesson? Do you change much stuff, or is it just at the moment because it's winter? I'm looking technically, um, but then obviously using all the modern equipment that you can use, we've uh, just found out some little bits with rhythm and that sort of thing in the stroke as well, which makes a massive difference um, with when it comes to pace control. So no, it's uh, it's something that obviously is well, it's not really a weakness. I'm still gaining overall on a season. I'm putting yeah, yeah. against average, but. It's not, you know, you don't want to be average, do you? You want to be, you know, it's, it's one of the areas that I am lacking and I, I can definitely see an improvement in. Good. Fred Dewsbury, this. This is Sully's mate. Do I mate. even want to know? Sully's mate. What's your rig like? What's a rig? Doesn't matter, carry on. <laughs> oh. This is from Steve Rawlings. If a duck takes a fortnight to eat two tons of sawdust, how long will it take to lay a 40 foot plank? <laughs> Sounds like it could be some sort of like ancient proverb. I know. If a tree falls in a forest yeah. and no one's around to hear it, doesn't make a noise. How long does it take to okay, pay a blank? This video is Brilliant. Too long, this. Shredder, 1983. What are your practice plans for 2020, Alex? Practice plans? I mean, right now we're in Tenerife and I've come out here to practice and do some work just because I think being at home, stood on a range, practicing with loads of layers on isn't. It's not good for my game. I don't feel like I can get too much out of it. So I'm trying to do my technique work much more like indoors in my little garage so that I don't get obsessed with strike and ball fight and everything like that when I'm working technique. And practice wise, I just want to play more. I was going to say, when you're indoors as well, you can swing in a t shirt, which is more yeah, applicable exactly, to how yeah. you're playing. Exactly. In and I want, I want to get out and play more uh, in practice, play different golf courses because playing your home course, it's hard to practice routine and get into that sort of mental routine you need to in tournaments so yeah practice wise is, is to play more which is kind of practice-ish how aware are you of the soul of the club head do you feel it in your hands or is it not really a thing the soul of the club head in my hands you no you feel it through straight yeah you definitely again this is why you use different bounces different grinds pre-wear on the front you know front edge of your of your irons and all that you want it to interact in a way that feels Feels good. Well, you don't want the club getting stuck. You don't, and you, and also you don't want it bouncing off the top of the turf. So, yes, yeah, interaction is massive. Yeah, you can do a bit of an experiment with that. Just have a couple of practice swings and change your hand position. So hands forward, practice swing, feel what it does in the ground. Hands back, feel what it does, and hands in the middle. Just feel you'll you'll learn to get a feeling for where the soul is, how it's interacting with the ground, and you change that for different. Certainly with chip shots. Yeah, chip, yeah more chip than, shots. More bunk, than bunk play as well. Yeah, bunk play can really manipulate what, what the club head does through the sand. What's the cost of going on tour in a player's first year? What we're doing here, like swinging Ooh. around. And how does it compare to now? What is it, 20, 20, say 25 events? Yeah. You, you're gonna spend two to three grand a week. Yeah. So, Bounce over up, a season, yeah, you're, you're talking what, 50 to 75 grand really, which... Big expense. It's a lot of money. So yeah, it, it, it isn't a uh, cheap thing to do. From my point of view, what is that? Well, we've had diggers, we've had all kinds, and now we've got. Where is that? Oh, it's that finger. lorry down there. It doesn't mean to be fumes, I've got fingerprints on this oh, now. Um, my point of view, I've played seasons on Euro Pro before, and that's cost about 12 grand, I reckon, cost wise. Bearing in mind, the top earner on Euro Pro is usually making about, the winning about 30, so it's. It's expensive. It is expensive, and the lads, you know, it's earning your way up and working your way up. It can. You've got to take a bit of a risk, I think, financially. Andy Scarborough, good lad. Andy, big fan of Andy. Andy lad. Yeah, big fan of Andy. Yeah. Do either of you think Paul has an outside chance of making the Ryder Cup? Absolutely no chance. You joking? I'm gonna sit here and just sound incredibly cocky if I go. Yeah, I think I can do that. No, well, oh, I'll answer you... it. I'll answer it then. Yes, I think <laughs> genuine. He has, yeah. If you go win, if you go win something yeah. big or a couple of big tournaments, then yeah, because my points are just go through the roof. So it's one of those. You need a bit. You, you need a bit of bit, you bit, of bit of luck. You need to perform on the right week, and if yeah. if it happens, and yeah, I um, be good to see that. Oh, you were nice then. Muff, I know. Yeah, I don't know why. I hate you, Muffy. This is for Muffy. This. Have you had Botox? It's aimed at me that. No. 
<laughs> Quite clearly not. That's Fra what the, little frowny frown. That's what this. So. <laughs> Hilarious that Muffy, thanks. Horrible. There's no need for that, is there? Well, me and you can take the piss out of each other, but you know, Muffy. people on the outside. Muffy bad, coming bad, in, bad, giving bad, it a lap. Yeah. Oh. Oh, 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 I've got amazing hair. Yeah, oh, it is. Oh, his hair's, oh, his oh, hair's up there. The Pathetic. He has got good hair, like. Shadow and mischief. Why are you following us? Why do so many Who's golfers? Who? Hey! Why do so many golfers progress to a certain point that never get any better? Talent, severe lack of talent. And will the crocodile help bust through a plateau? Hopefully. The crocodile won't know. It's just a stupid thing. That. He got quicker. He broke his swing speed stupid record. Thing, I think that was down to me and the croc and the painted now crocodile stretch. I think. I think talking about why do players get to a certain point and then struggle. I think. It can be a combination of stuff. It can be just the game might not be quite there, just little small margins. But biggest thing for me again is mentality and the difference in mentality of the players, like, like a Brooks, um, like who's a, who's a Brooks? A Brooks Kapka. Thanks. Hooks Kuepiko. Like, <laughs> like players like that. Justin Thomas. Um, there's loads of the, the top lads. Their only thought is winning. That's their mentality is winning, and they they have that focus. But they're not fortunate enough because they're incredible golfers. But they've earned the the right to be in that position where their only care is winning. Second doesn't make a difference. So it's mentality as well. I think that's huge. But if you can get the right results, your mentality is is kind of easy to be in that frame of mind, isn't it? Daniel Morris. Ooh, golf friends. F off. Why are you smiling so much? <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. Yeah, it's hilarious, yeah. Cheers, Dad. That's Go right and right. grow. <laughs> right. Can you be serious on this one? Uh, well, I've been serious all the way through it. What does Paul think is required in your game to get you out on tour? Oh, we've got to hit a long way now. You have a, you're like, you've got to come out. Yeah, this is a question young. to me, this. Oh. This is a question for you, to me. What do you? What does Paul think is required in your game? Oh, in your game. In oh, sorry, game I thought I made me out on tour. Um, you know what? You've put on some actual proper length driving. <laughs> Not our biggest bit, but he yeah, has because like there was a time where I was clearly past you all the time, all yeah. the time. And then in practice, you kind of you've definitely got longer off the tee, and you've got a hell of a lot better off the tee as well. Like yeah. you've got the ball in play. You know, you look really solid off the tee now. I think maybe a little bit more of, I don't know, a little bit more control with the irons at times. Yeah. And then just loads of short game practice, yeah. I think, and just, just tidy that up because really if your iron play is tidy and then the odd one you do get up and down, you're never going to drop a shot. If your iron play is tidy, your proximity gets better. You're a decent putter and you get in the fairways off the, off the tee mm -hmm. now and it hit it quite a good distance. So, you know, I think they're the things that really, those little control elements now. That's we were talking about the other day. Is, is shot selection as well, and being able to play a shot into a yeah, certain pin. Yeah, we actually we played a couple of days ago over here. I'm oh, sorry, on the Wirral, um, and you know, yeah, your shot selection just didn't suit the shot. It didn't give you a miss. Mm. Like draws and fades into certain flags, you're always trying to hit the perfect golf shot all the time, rather than 15 foot right and safe. And if you pull it a little bit, it goes stiff. It's like those sort of elements of not allowing yourself not to always have to hit the perfect golf shot because you just don't do it yeah aj porter do you reckon you can play on tour if you don't have a ton of natural talent but work hard um, i think it's harder to do now i think i think you need a talent in a in, a, in an area of your game i think you need to, yeah you need at least one part of your game to be off the chart yeah. if you're not if you're not that good a player that sounds terrible but if you're not that good a player but you, and you're a fantastic putter, you, you actually give yourself half a chance, really. You know, you know or you, I don't know, if you, if you excel at one part, then you've got more of a chance than if you, I'm going to use the word average across the board. The top lads in the world are mega talented though, aren't they? To get yeah, to yeah. the top, I think you've got to Well, there's that correlation between, I think, dri driving stats now. Basically, the long, basically, it's the best putters of the longest hitters. Yeah. John O'Butterly. Do you ever see Paul playing awful and think to yourself, how does he have a talk? <laughs> Every day. There's people we play with and I am embarrassed 
I cannot play social golf. I am useless it is at fun. social it golf. Is it's funny. embarrassing. It is funny because he doesn't get into his <laughs> mental state where he actually... We're talking before, as much as you, you can play, it's like taking a penalty, you can practice it as much as you want, but you don't get in the, the intensity that you would be if you actually had a penalty to win the league and the cup or whatever it might be. I it's, hit it. 20 odd shorts off the tee yeah. in practice. Yeah. Literally, I swing it at like 113. It's ridiculous. And then get out and swing it at 120. In, in, in practice, I'm quite regularly past the off yeah. the tee. In, in tournament play or when we yeah. have a game where we're scoring and have a match against each other. You know, I'm big bucks of five a game I'm for the coffees. I'm probably 15 yards, but just let's change the old memory card then. Welcome back to Talking <laughs> with Paul and Al. We've run out. How long have you been mates for, Pappy1875? We're not mates for acquaintances. My mum knows his mum. <laughs> no, we've been mates since we were kids. So we grew up playing golf together, so probably since we were like 10, 11. So Funny like. story, I was in school, and I thought I was the best player in school. I went to a different school now, to be fair. Uh, and then someone said, oh, Alex Evans is off like 12 handicap when I was like off 18 or something. I was fuming. I was like, how is someone better than me? Didn't like it at all. And then we became mates. And I didn't grow. Like, what was it, Fenemies? Fenemies? Fenemies, yeah. yeah. Fenemies. Friends who are enemies. Beth, who would be your favourite four ball to play in from the current European tour players? Sully, will it? You know, I'll probably throw Eddie Pepperell in there for the banter. Nice. <laughs> John O'Raymond. Oh, no, what the fuck, in there just to see a head off? You can have, you can have five balls. You, yeah, you know what? You know what? There's loads of that yet. Having five balls, yeah. yeah. I haven't played this course, so I can't give an opinion on this, but I know it's absolutely meant to be tremendous. But do you think Silith Golf Club is open road to material except for the infrastructure? You played Silith I played there way. years ago, I can't remember that well. Uh, I remember it being very, very good though. I remember having a great night out in Carlisle. I actually remember the night out in Carlisle more than the golf course, so probably shouldn't be on the open rotor. Favourite course of the Northwest Lynx courses? Ooh, we had this conversation the other day as well. You know what? I, I have always loved Birkdale, love it. Like, probably my favourite course in the world. But, last couple of years, a few of the changes they made and improvements and the condition it's in, West Lanx is unbelievable. Always, so, like, plays like summer golf in the middle of winter and it is such a challenge. In my opinion, massively underrated and that is, that's one of my favourite golf courses to play. I just think it's, it's a different planet. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's a fair point, actually. Uh, I get, I, I appreciate them all, but I actually go with... You know what? I love Formby as well. Actually, Formby's brilliant. Formby's brilliant. But I'm going to have to say Birkdale. I've just got some great memories there playing playing two Opens there. Uh, you know, it's like... Yeah, I think that big, makes a difference. Have you played well around big, the course? Big time. Yeah. I didn't play well in 16. I think I missed play about two or three. No. Oh, you missed it. Well, yeah, you did well in... Oh, eight. oh eight from his yeah. top 20 for yeah. Phil Mickelson yeah. Lee Craig Evans this will be serious this is my brother he's serious will there ever be a boy born that can swim faster than a shark it's off the office that isn't it yeah is it Gareth that is it's Gareth yeah I'm thinking what, what are you I thinking right now what are you thinking right now I'm thinking <laughs> oh could, could, could have kill him with, with my shoelaces best drills to improve short game and putting I'll go with the putting one use a mirror set up Massively important, use a mirror, eyes over the ball, shoulders square, immediate feedback. Short game, uh, I think uh, create a little game that puts you under a bit of pressure. I think it's dead easy just to stand there and uh, chip 50 balls onto a chipping green from the same spot, the same club. That's not short game, it doesn't happen like that. You have to sort of invent and figure out a way of getting things done and playing little games around the chipping green is, is one of the best ways of doing it. Yeah. Ed Tranter, who is the assistant pro at West Lanks, we were just talking about. No. Would you say James Dean is your biggest fan? James Dean's the other assistant at West Lanks. Uh, I'd like to think that James Dean's my biggest fan. I'm the biggest fan of him and his headband, to be honest. So, yeah, it's like a mutual thing. And yeah, can you send me a headband? I'll get one. Oh, do it. Lanks. Oh, please send him a headband. Please send him a headband. Wearing a headband. Next one's. Do you think your nose is getting bigger the older you get? Okay. Will Liverpool win the league? If so, with how many games to go? I'm not answering that either because I, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even tempting fate. I'm not. No, nope. you're not bothered, are you? You're not bothered. You're not bothered. No, no, not bothered. Whatever. Tom, Tom Lar, Tom Lewis, good lad, Tom. 
I, that's the one that just asked me about the nose thing, so it's not that good a lad. But does the Biff get to use his track man, or are you always hogging it? Well, he takes it away with him, so I don't, I can't steal it. But that's one of the other things that I'm intending to steal a bit more often. Joe Herity, by the way, Joe Herity, go on his Instagram. What a golf swing he has! What a golf swing! Rhythm, honestly, it's like it's ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, does the Biff enjoy the raw spinach too? <laughs> Well, I stayed. That sounds like some sort of euphemism. No, it's not. That. It's not. I stayed with Joe at Q School last year, the year before last, and yeah, he was surprised that I just eat raw spinach out of the bag, like as a snack. It's like a rabbit, honestly. His diet. You know what? Pathetic. No, honestly, I, I know stuff that's good for me, and I don't. Have a burger for crying out loud! I don't particularly massively into the veg, so I just eat it like just literally the nutrients. So I eat broccoli raw and stuff just because. Weird. I can't Carry be bothered on. with anything yeah, else. Um, how do you go from a three handicap to pro level? I'm a golfer. Don't play for college, but trying to go pro. That's from Rayhan Griffin. I mean, it's difficult to know. There's, without no disrespect, but there's different kinds of three handicappers, mm. and some of them are at their absolute peak at three, and some of them are almost Just throwing at, golf shots away. At three yeah, almost at their worst yeah, playing yeah. off three. So it's difficult to know. The only thing. I could say to that is what you were talking about before. Just make sure you've got control over your irons and your short game is, regardless of how good you are, your short short game's got to be absolutely yeah. top draw, regardless. You of can't, how good you you can't believe irons. how tough some tour greens are to get up and down, especially in, in America as well. Literally, if you miss it on the wrong side, you are completely dead. Like can't can't get it inside twenty foot. It's that hard. John Close, nice lad again, John. Do putts go in when you call them from two foot out from the hole? Absolutely not, John. We seen Get that. your lips off my golf ball. We seen that when we played at Formby Hall. Absolutely oh, Mike, not. Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh, it's like a three trike. Yeah, that's weird, that. No, definitely not. Doesn't go in. Best swing idea for single pull bunker plate with a high lip. Open the club face. Ball forward. Weight on the left. Keep it there. Concise. Yes, exactly. What part of your set is most important to get fitted if you want to improve? Ah. Well, you've got all of them. Yeah, get the whole bag fitted. All 100%, of them. Hundred percent, get the whole bag fitted. If, yeah. you, if you're going for if you're going for a fitting session for a drive, you may as well get the irons, wedges, yeah, everything done. Expect take an hour. It's one of the best things you'll invest in. Hundred <clears> percent. <throat> That's why he robs my gear all the time. <laughs> I'm not anymore. <clears throat> Understand strokes gained, this is from Hosel Rocketeer. Understand that strokes gained, but would amateurs be better sharpening short game than trying to smash it by Cal? Uh, yes, effectively. Uh, I think yeah, there's amateur. a lot of duff chips, three putts, that is very simple just to eradicate, you know, and, and, and save just bundles of shots around. And on that same, same person, with strokes gain, does your practice routine change after looking at like your stats from last season? Do you look at that? And, yeah, of and course. You're looking at week. You're just looking. Well, you, one of the key things with it though, is to make sure your good stuff remains good. But yeah. then you're obviously trying to make a, a change. You get your, your weaknesses, you know, better. Or if you know, try and turn them into strengths. Wow, that's a cliche. Ooh, I hate it. Here we go. It's a long question. There's Peter Schumacher. Ooh. Do you guys know of any golfers who found? back to their normal game after herniating discs in the lower back. Obviously, there are a lot of examples on tour like Tiger, Luke, Rosie, Rory and Jason Day, but I'm more interested in normal guys who don't have the bankroll to get any treatment available to them. I think if you've got limitating fast factors in your golf swing, I think you're going to struggle really. Yeah. It's hard to compensate. Um, I, one of my trainer, John Boskill, um, is a spine specialist and you know, that'd be a question for him, really. He's, uh, he's yeah, very, not, he's very opinion opinion on yeah, that. Yeah. And same person, what are your view on one length clubs? Personally, I'm, I'm quite traditionalist with my golf clubs. You know, I don't, I try and keep it quite simple. So I, I, um, I, I wouldn't, for me personally, it's, it's not for me, but for Bryson, it seems to have worked, so. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, I, I, I sh I should also understand how the swing weights work and how you launch the long irons if they're short and likewise how do you control the speed of the head in a wedge that's a couple of inches longer. I just it, it just does I can't I, I can understand the principle but for me it's just not something I'd even consider. 
question for me. Constantin, I don't know, I hope I say his name right, because he's, he's, he's a good lad. Constantin Papadopoulos. Well done. What a name that is. We didn't have any beers last night, you can Super tell from, him, from that, that pronunciation. I uh, Al, Wildlife Goals 2020. Big oh. goals, that in it. Wildlife. I just want to get a more variation in it and like start to interact with them a bit more. I think if I can get like a favourite I, one. I, I, I just think you've got it. If you're going to come to tournaments, come to South Africa and go on safari. Be amazing. Yes. Wildlife yes. Al. Yeah. True wildlife Al with a hat and the corks and all that sort of stuff. Be amazing. I'd like amazing. To, I'd like to get to know some of them on a more personal level so that when I go back, they kind you of. You get upset when the bird flies off though? They or when the chicks grow up and leave? Me. Can the Biff still make the Masters? Yeah. Yes, I can. I need to do something quite spectacular, but yeah, I can. Top I need... 50 the week before, is it? Two weeks. Uh, yeah, it's a couple of weeks before Masters uh, cut off date, I need to be top 50 in the world. So I need a quick start. Question for both of us what's the weakest and strongest parts of our game? My strongest part now for me is probably driving, which yeah. quite, I'm, I'm proud to say that because it was the weakest, so I've addressed that. Um, but sometimes I neglect other areas, so the weakest part for me would probably be at this current moment in time, um, would probably be shaping well no probably mentality and picking the right shots to play i think It'd probably be my weakest part of the minute mentality not that it's weak but it needs to get better uh me i am placed my probably my strongest in, into the wedges um considered a good driver of golf ball but i'm not well i am long but i'm not one of the longest guys uh play with kirk at armor in uh, turkey and it was just obscene so I don't consider myself a strong driver of golf ball, I consider myself a good driver of golf ball. Uh, and putting six to 20 feet is where I'm losing. So that area between six and 20 feet is something I need to uh, really address. I'm strong inside six foot, one of the, actually one of the best inside six foot. But, uh, yeah, my three putt avoidance is quite good, but uh, yeah, my actual holding of six to 20 footers is, is what's letting me down considerably. Another question for you this. <clears throat> what's it like losing mates off tour like Jamie Donaldson? Um, who are you playing your practice rounds with in 2020? Uh, Jamie will still be around. He's still in the medical. Is he? Yeah, he'll still be around. He'll still he's still going to play. He'll still play this season. Um, and he's he's too he's he's too good to to not play. Um, it it is it's a bit of a change in the guard at times. You know, it's a sport, so you've got young lads coming through all the time, and yeah, it it, it is nice having lads to go for dinner with and all that. But we're still there trying to do a job. Um, and you, you always have you always have close friends around you anyway. You always make new friends and that sort of thing. So you know, while it is sad, you're you're still trying to get, do your job for you know as well as you can. Is it really possible for an amateur to totally change their swing? Or are we better off just refining what we've got? Refine. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> I think with most amateurs, it's time. Yeah, 100%. it's time that you can apply to it. If you've got if you can go the range for you know a couple hours every day, then yeah, you can change things in your swing. But if you once a week playing very difficult really I think you can just sort of find something that works for you and stick to it rather than trying to make big changes because it just it, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time I think what Al just right. said there as well if you're playing once a week you haven't got time to go and practice and implementing a lesson onto the golf course is pretty much impossible yep what's the biggest challenge of maintaining or improving your world ranking it's the balance of divisor and accumulating points because your divisor dilutes your points so the more, so the more you, play, you play you actually divide your points by the number of times you play so I get criticised sometimes for not playing enough, but I'm looking after my world ranking. I'm trying to accumulate points through not playing too much and diluting them back down. So you've got to pick pick and choose big events and then have the, the bottle to then go and play well in those big events. If you didn't play golf, what would you be doing? <laughs> I'd, be having, I'd be in a bar over here. <laughs> Sorry, on the Wirral. I'd be, I'd be in a bar on the Wirral. I'd be in a pub on the, in the Wirral. What, just in like, as a career? Yeah, I'd have a bar. Yeah, that. Oh right, okay. You know, that's what you'd have. You'd yeah, have a bars bar. and restaurants here. Okay. Because it's terrible. I'd like to think I would be racing motorbikes. Uh, that was a thing when I was a kid. My dad used to race uh, in the Isle of Man. Um, raced all over the place, and yeah, it wasn't really the safest option for me as a kid. But yeah, I think if I didn't play golf, I would have sort of followed that. He's small enough to do it. Yeah, little one two five job. Yeah. yeah. Moto 2 or Moto 3, I'd be able. probably be world champion. So. Aerodynamic nose. Mm. Uh, what? No, helmet doesn't make a difference. Rubbish joke, that. Would you have to like get a special helmet made for it? 
stop it now. When do the pros get used to playing in front of people? For most amateurs, it's obviously terrifying, but to be a top pro, something you have to get used to. Is it just doing it often, or is it a confidence thing? I know you've played in front of crowds definitely more often than me, but this, when I was younger, I used to love it. So I played a few bits. The English amateur was at Bromborough, 2005, and because we were the home players, we had quite a lot of people following us around, mm -hmm. and if I'd have won my like fifth horse or something, round, yeah, something, yeah, yeah, we would have played each other in the courses yeah, or something like that. If I'd have won that round, I'd have played him in the next game, but I didn't. I lost, but I had. I remember having, I don't know, maybe two hundred people walking around, and I loved it at that point. Absolutely loved it, and that's something I think you've got to deal with, in, uh, whether it be the same now or not. I, I remember playing a little bit different, but Euro Pro last round, I was fourth position in the last round. Um, I parred every hole, the first nine holes, I think I parred, and then the sky cameras come on, it's on TV, and I lost the plot back now. This is actually on plot. YouTube somewhere, like the full meltdown is actually on. It is. It, yeah. it, it, like it's, on YouTube. Well, they cut the cameras after a meltdown, but I was on, <laughs> I, well, to be honest with you, I was on camera front nine, showing loads of shots, and then. When I'm still in contention back now, and I lost the plot, but that's something mentally you got to deal with. But you can answer that better, I suppose. Some, yeah, no, I uh, so obviously playing those. playing high level amateur stuff before turning pro, uh, you kind of get used to it a little bit. But then I threw myself fully into the mix with that. Uh, so I qualified for the Open in '07 at Carnoustie as an amateur, and basically went from playing in front of 50 people to playing in front of thousands of people. Played practice round with Rory McIlroy. Uh, and Trevor Immelman, and I literally couldn't stop shaking. Hmm. So anything from that point, no matter what pro level I've ever played, I've never been that nervous again in my entire life because nothing will ever be like that. Imagine first year Ryder Cup would be like a bit like that, and I imagine first year the Masters would be something like that for me because obviously it's such a but it's massive thing. Isn't it? it's a exactly, yeah. I think I think because I chuck myself in the deep end so early on, you kind of just get used to it very quickly. How many shots around do you really flush? 100%. <laughs> like, <Funny>. like, <laughs> it, it's funny, isn't it? I think you, you create your swing so that you can get away with the ones that you don't flush. You, you, good shots are always going to be really good, but there's loads of shots in around that you don't flush, isn't there? I think I flush every single one. My caddy will tell you I flush about 20%. And that's why my clubbing's terrible. <laughs> Who's the best ball striker you've played with on tour? Oh, good question. Obviously, Rory's up there. Uh, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life was playing with Ernie Els at Wentworth in one of my first years, probably 08 or 09. Um, he hit it. His iron play was ridiculous. He hit it in the mid at the middle of every green, started it at the middle of every green, and then either drew it a little bit or faded a little bit of the flags. And it never went past the flag. It never overdrew or overcut. It was just an absolute display. I've different never seen place. anything like it. Different, oh, different league. Different Another league. question. This one's from me. How hot are you right now? Oh, mate, I'm literally sweating. <laughs> this is, like, ridiculous. <laughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> right, this one. <clears throat> Jack McCrindle. Now, Jack has got a really interesting story. Um, really committed to his golf, but he's been ill for the past year. Um, and it's, it's quite inspiring when you read his story and the stuff he's starting to do for charity so if you can go to his Instagram Jack McCrindle is actually on Instagram it's JackMCC2003 Was it a hard transition from amateur golf to professional golf as GB and I don't have as good success on the main tours compared to the US? Uh, I think the lads coming from the Great Britain and Ireland struggle to adapt to professional golf more than no, but in the US you play collegiate golf a lot of the time, that's a feeder. Um, I had a choice to go to college in the States and chose not to. I stayed in, in Europe and uh, was part of England golf and all that sort of stuff. Um, I, think, I think American golf at times is, is a bit different. I think there is more of an emphasis on smash it as far as you can, wedge it good and put out your, out your boots. Where in Europe you the, you, you've got a bigger diversity of golf courses. Your golf game's got to be. I'm going to say uh, not. Uh, this isn't meant in any other way, but I think your golf game's more rounded. Your ability to adapt to go from Kikuyu grass onto Lynx golf, onto Parkland, onto altitude to wherever, 
different weather conditions. You know, you're playing at five degrees in the Dunhill Championship, and then you're playing in 35 degrees and 100% humidity in Malaysia. It's you, your body and your travel and everything from a European standpoint. I know it's called a European tour. It's a world tour. We go everywhere now, <clears throat> and I think it just, I think it just gives you, I don't know, it's a bit of a better standing. But again, speaking to some of the other lads. I'm rambling on here. I was just going to say, wow. Yeah, I'm rambling on a bit here. But it's quite interesting. Some lads who've gone to America, because the greens are very similar week in, week out, at the same pace, they become better putters because a 2% break on that style of green breaks that weight every it's single same, time. Yeah. Where we have a bit of grain, so it doesn't move that way. Maybe putting on 10 stint one week, 12 the next. And it because it, you're having to adapt all the time, the, the putts are never quite going in at the same pace or Your preparation same line. is massive then, isn't it's it? It's massive, yeah. And it's um, it, it, it does show the lads that go to America end up putting better as well. I just, I, I mean, I went to college in the States and I just think the attitude's a little bit different than in America. And I think they breed confidence. If you're good, they make it known. And, and, and you know, it's more of like an environment where they push you to be successful rather than especially press over here are quick to knock you down a little bit and I, and I just think it's an overall feeling that you know yeah success is, is it needs to be a little bit more get off is he back yeah. yeah a little bit more encouraged I think uh, would be my opinion on that I spent four years in the states so I was young then young then favorite and least Favourite player to be drawn with? Ooh! That's controversial, right? Uh, Favourite player probably would be someone like. Who's easy to play with? Who's good and easy to play with? I, I, I want to say Andy Sullivan, but I end up having too much of a laugh at him at times. Uh, someone like Danny Willett would be great to play with because he's always pushing forward, gets on with it. Great player. Again, I know one of his mates, but. He is class. He is class. Uh, worst would be someone who's slow. Honestly, it kills me. Um, someone that's dawdling around and just not focused on what they're doing and holding everybody up and just and it, that's out of a selfish point of view a lot of the time. Slow players need to get a grip. Good out to so they're dodging the, the actual person. Not mentioning him. That was a few of them on tour. What? Reece, oh my god, he said it. Reese from Brombra. Any put and drills? I think. Mirror's great. Mirror, starting online through T-Pegs. Basic uh, stuff. And then pace control. Basic stuff. Hardest course you've played not on tour. This lad, he's from Australia, he just played the course at Barn Boogle, the farm course at Barn Boogle in Tasmania. Apparently that's the easier one, but he said the bunkering and some of the greens are insane. I would like to play those courses actually, but the same people that did... Um, Bam Google Dunes and Bandon Dunes, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, toughest not on the open road. Uh, sorry, not, not on the open road. Not, not on, on tour. Europe at all. Um, I haven't played that many. Not on. A bammer tour. is tough, isn't it? I was I was going to say we practice up at a bammer on the Wirral, uh, Tenerife. Sorry, um, <laughs> and honestly, if you can start getting around that golf course under par, you kind of know you're ready to go and play and compete because it, it's just tough. You got to control your golf ball into those greens so 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 well. One for me, will he go for open qualifying this year? I guess that to me because he's already qualified. Yes, 100%, I will. Uh, they've changed first stage now. It was at West Langs for me, but they've changed it now, so I'm not sure where I'll go. It's a Coldy now, you know, first well, stage okay. for one of them. So I'll probably go to Coldy. It's my local course. So. so yes, quick answer to that. Will you play the Irish Open? I'll answer that for you. Yes, he will. Where is that this year? Uh, oh, God. <coughs> Mount... Mount, Mount Juliet. Well done. Thank you. Not a links course, is it? Thirty yard bump and run or fifteen yard flop shot? Ooh. Depends on the situation. Well, it? I'm going thirty yard bump and run. Bit safer. Bit safer. Less to do. Would you want Biff's short game or long game? Well, I wouldn't want his hair game. So, would I want your long game or short game? Short I'm, game is good, isn't it? Uh, but. I'll go long game because, like I said before, I'm a control of my iron, something I need to work on, and I think that's where you're very strong. So, 
Yeah. I'd, 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 I'd agree with that. I'll go long game. Right, on that note, that is a lot of questions and we've only got through like half of them. He's rambled on well too long. Whoa, hang on, it's not just me. So, once a quick fire, bosh, 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 but he's going on about all sorts. Anyone that have missed out, feel free to fire them over. Any more questions and we can answer them in shorter videos on Instagram or whatever they are. Thanks for everyone's questions. It's interesting to run over a few stuff, isn't it? Yeah, well, quite absolutely. a bit of that. Um, I'm going to have to go because I'm so hot, it's a joke. Yeah, it's a bunch of facts different now. Yeah, it's getting red. So rather. hot, so hot. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.